To continue this discussion about COVID, Dr. Suzanne Judd, a PhD at epidemiologist at the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Public Health. It's good to have you back here on this Friday afternoon. A lot to talk about. Um, let's jump right into this issue of efficacy and now the Mayo Clinic study, not peer reviewed, but those of us who got Pfizer here, 42% versus MR, the uh, Moderna, which, what, 86%, but it's kind of like, whoa, slow down, everybody, because this doesn't have anything to do with illness or severity, does it? It doesn't. That doesn't at all. We are seeing that locally here as well. Um, we haven't published our own data either, but we are seeing some slight infection in people that were vaccinated. Um, it's not at all a bad infection, though, for most people. It's usually a light infection. It makes it more like the common cold if you've been vaccinated. It keeps you out of the hospital and it keeps you from dying. So the vaccine is still doing what it should be doing. Doctor, it's good to see you again. I was reading the number of hospitalizations in your state, although it's nowhere near where it was during the peak. They've risen pretty significantly over the last several weeks. What's the current situation just in the hospitals? Are there enough ICU beds? There currently are enough ICU beds, but we've been making calls to people to say, please, please, please put your mask on. The mask is the best way to stop that transmission of COVID, even if you've been vaccinated. People who've been vaccinated could still spread COVID, and right now our cases are skyrocketing. We're really concerned that by the end of the month, if we continue on the same path that we're on, we'll exceed the capacity that the hospitals have. So th that's a, a critical issue in Alabama right now. What do you think about when we talk about the booster shots? Why not just come out and say everybody 65 or older? Because we have Dr. Fauci saying all of us are going to need a booster at some point. So why not just get ahead of that? The way the FDA works, they require data. They need to see from the data that it works safely in everyone. That's that's one thing people who are hesitating to get a vaccine should feel good about. The reason they're not rushing to say that is because they haven't seen the data yet. There are many people who would say, well, forget the data. I don't want COVID. I'm going to get a booster. And that's understandable as well. But again, the FDA is not going to do that until they have the data. How is it going to be administered? I mean, how will they make sure that it's only immunocompromised patients who are getting that third shot? They'll ask, so there will be a question on the questionnaire uh, as to whether or not someone is immunocompromised, but keeping people from lying is not easy. <laughs> so that it's possible that people will say, yep, I have a condition and I'm gonna need the booster. Uh, you'll hear anecdotal stories about that happening because we just don't have a, a great way of documenting those types of conditions. Um, and, and at the moment, there's plenty of vaccine supply. So I don't think you'll see pharmacies starting to throttle back and grill people, are you sure you need it? You'll probably see them say, okay, you say you need it, you can have it. I, I know a story, and I, I'm reluctant to say too much about it because I know the individual, a doctor who attempted to get a booster, but in the state where that individual lives, it's tied to your social security number and they knew immediately, not eligible. Is it that way across the country? Are all of our Im immunization records tied to our social security number? And is there some kind of central database or is it state by state? It's state by state. Um, it's not always that quickly maintained. Uh, it really depends on where you are. Some mm -hmm. people are refusing to give social security numbers. We had a story about that on the news down here. Um, we had another story about a young person who was under the age of 12 and uh, gave false information to get vaccinated. So, you know, again, we just don't have the type of data systems that would ensure that the rules are followed exactly. What's your biggest worry right now? Because we were about to see millions of students. Some have already started to go back to the classroom. Not all states are mandating masks. And we know that that has obviously been a massive concern, not only for parents, but also just for people in those communities. So as you see this play out nationwide, what, what, are, what are the biggest challenges that are ahead of us? School starting is a huge challenge. Universities going back is another challenge, not because those people are likely to get sick and need to be hospitalized. Some will, but not many. Uh, the real challenge is they'll lead to greater spread in the community. So we already have very high spread down here in the Southeast. That could lead to that tipping point where the hospitals are really full. I was just listening yesterday to one of our physicians say, think about it. If our hospitals are full and you get in a car accident, we won't have a spot for you. So it's just so important right now that people socially distance, wear their mask, get the vaccine so it keeps you out of the hospital. That My biggest concern is that we're going to fill up our hospitals and, and people are going to see um, some of the things play out that we saw in Italy last year. You know, when we look at what's happening overseas, I think it's hopeful 
when certain news organizations point to the UK and the Delta trajectory, they're going up and then coming down. Is that what we can expect here as rapidly or what's different about us in the UK that might not play out that way? We should have a very similar trajectory where we go up and come down. We will probably peak a little bit higher. We'll probably be closer to India. Uh, they, they also went up and came back down. They had fewer people immunized than um, or vaccinated than we do. Um, so it's, it's possible we'll be a little bit lower, but I definitely will go up and come back down. I think, like you said, worldwide, we're seeing some really great data in places like the UK, where they've got 70% vaccinated. Even more interesting is Iceland, where they've got 90% vaccinated, and they're experiencing a large outbreak, but their hospitals are not overwhelmed. All right. We appreciate when you check in with us and give us all of the news. Sometimes the facts are hard, but knowing the truth is always much better than looking into a vacuum. And Absolutely. we appreciate it. Dr. Suzanne Judd, PhD epidemiologist at the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Public Health.